Happy holidays, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. This is part four of a four-part series on our holiday survival kit. So, we, uh, so I'm Rick Tabor, and um, I'm with Generations Magazine, several Kapuna nonprofits around the islands here, uh, the Kakua Council, the, uh, I'm with Rotary, actually, and also Alzheimer's Association, Hawaii Pacific Gerontological Society, um, just a number of things that I'm involved in. Um, and working with our Kapuna and advocating for our Kapuna is just a big part of my life. I'm also 45 years in the mental health field, and uh, what I'm gonna start with and open with here today is a, my nine coping skills that I've been using for, oh my gosh, I've been using these for probably 30 years, um, and we do a number of things with them. Um, and I just feel that they're very important to go over with all of us and to think about. They're common sense kinds of strategies, but basically my nine coping skills are just, I, I think, very practical. <clears throat> the first thing we need to do is deal with our feelings. Feelings are important because they can tell us what we need to do. To deal with our feelings, we must name them, realize it's okay to feel them, and express them in a safe way. Then you can decide what to do to feel better. Now, I'd like to preface this with, um, just think about, um, when you're upset, can you solve problems? When you're angry, mad, uh, uh, do problems get solved or they, they, do they end up being worse? Um, so we need to kind of just check our feelings so that we can move into the solutions or solving the situation. Adjust our attitude. That's one way we can do this. What we tell ourselves about a situation will determine how we feel about it. Looking at the good side of things, having a positive attitude can always help us feel better. So. During the holidays, I find just personally having an attitude of gratitude <laughs> or any time of life is, is very useful. So our attitude really determines the outcome. It sets the tone for everything. Discover your choices. In every situation, there are things that can and cannot be changed. We can help ourselves when we choose something that can be changed and work towards that goal. Remember, our attitude can always be changed. Um, we can't change that Christmas Day falls on December 25th. So for you, those of you that are out there trying to shop for people at the last minute, um, every year it falls on December 25th. <laughs> uh, when, we, when we want to buy gifts for our, our Kapuna, we tend to, or our families, we tend to start, uh, we buy year round, and then we have the gifts ready to go. Just some tips. Accept imperfection. No person or thing is perfect. Everyone makes mistakes. We can help ourselves by remembering this and then adjusting our attitudes and discovering our choices. Um, being in mental health for uh, as long as I have, uh, recently, <coughs> um, um, well before the pandemic, I was on a plane and at the end of the trip, the guy sitting next to me asked, so what do you do for a living? And I said, I'm a mental health counselor. He said, oh, you must have like the perfect marriage. And I said, well, I am human. <laughs> and to be human is not to be perfect. I have a lot of skills, a lot of strategies, but I am still human. We all are. Give yourself a break. When you get tired physically or emotionally, we can help ourselves get our energy back by relaxing and taking a break from what we're doing. Taking a break can help us feel better. So again, I do a lot around caregiver self-care and getting a break can sometimes be very hard to do. You yeah, need to make time for that. Um, it's very important. Take things one step at a time. When we have too much to do or think about, we can feel overwhelmed. We'll feel better if we slow down, prioritize, and take things one step at a time. <clears throat> Sometimes just prioritizing and taking those steps, putting them in order, um, gives us the break that we need. Um, I, I tend to, when I'm feeling overwhelmed, I'm famous for lists. On my, on my iPhone here, there's this note section that I like to use, and I'll make a to-do list on there. And Oftentimes, once that to-do list is, is put together, I can relax because I know I have it written down and I'm not going to forget what I need to do. And then I just delete the things that I've done and I just kind of keep running that. And if I'm finding I'm still not getting it done, sometimes I put it into my schedule with a reminder. You know, I need to call my doctor to make an appointment. I put that in there with a the time so I know that. And if I don't get to it at that time that it's scheduled, I don't stress out. I just go ahead and forward that to the next day <laughs> to remind myself. So take one step at a time. Treat yourself kindly. When, when we're angry at ourselves or get frustrated or push ourselves too hard, it, can make us make, it makes us feel worse. If you use patience and gentle affirmations, we can feel better. 
So you can just say, oh, silly, geez, there, there I did that again. Um, right? Just you know, treat yourself kindly. Um, plan ahead. Plan ahead when there's a lot to do, like I was just talking about. Plan ahead uh, can help us prevent problems before they arise. Planning ahead can have us, help us have enough time, energy, and tools to complete the task. So planning is, is very important. This is a big one. Ask for help. Sometimes, no matter how hard we try or how many coping skills we use, we still can't solve our problem. That's when it's time to ask for help. So I would say on these, the two that jump out that are the hardest for people, one is uh, accept imperfection. We always want to do our best. Um, just because something wasn't done at its best doesn't mean that it wasn't done well. <laughs> because it's, it's done at the level that you're at at that point. Asking for help is huge. Um, a lot of people are very proud. They don't feel that uh, asking for help is something that they can do. And it's something that's very important to do. So know who you can ask. Know where you can find help. Um, and seek it out when you need it. All right, so let's do a... Uh, so with the nine coping skills, um, I like to do coping skills uh, uh, stories to help us kind of just think about the coping skills. So this story is uh, uh, Leilani's ordering her Christmas gifts on Amazon. She hears her father coughing in the living room and thinks to herself, oh boy, I sure hope he's okay. Her daughter Joy comes in and says, oh, Grandpa Puzz, uh, he's, he's got 101.9 temperature. At the emergency room, the doctor tells them he'll need to stay for observation. Next day's test results are COVID positive, Grandpapa. Joy's COVID test, the daughter's COVID test, also comes back positive, uh, but she's asymptomatic. Joy has attended several gatherings without wearing a mask. What are Leilani and Joy feeling? So think about the feelings. And Grandpapa? What coping skills will they need to use to deal with this? Well, let's think about that. So first off, they've, uh, they've already uh, um, asked for help by going to the emergency room and they were tested, right? So what they're going to need now, well, first off, they're gonna to have to deal with their feelings if they're feeling upset, right? They're gonna to have to accept imperfection. You can't change what is, it, it, it's what's, what's happening right now. And then they're just gonna to have to go through the process of, of um, hoping for the best outcome, right? And supporting each other. Um, so um, again, my, my, my word to everybody for coping this year for the holidays is wear your mask and wash your hands, please. Um, it's, it, it, it helps everybody. All right, <clears throat> there we are, New Year's Eve, my wife and I, animated. All right, so just think about, talk about a time for yourself. So this was set up for a Zoom meeting. Uh, talk about a time you used the nine coping skills and how you resolved the situation. So I get asked quite often, you know, uh, when, when a person's in crisis, how do, they, how do they remember to use the nine coping skills? And so I'm gonna back up and just say the best way to integrate the coping skills into your life, you're already using them. I can, I can guarantee you. you, you may not realize it, but you already are using them. The best thing to do is to practice them, to think about them before a crisis happens, so it's a part of your life. So when a crisis happens, you can fall back on it. Um, what I've done with many of my clients through the years is they have that list with them. I used to work with kids and they actually carry it in their back pockets. Um, teachers would have it up in the classroom. Even the CEOs of, of uh, companies would have it on their desk. They'd use it for retreats and things like that. So it's just a matter of practicing it. I do a lot of stories with it, coping skills stories. I used to do large groups with developmentally disabled. They loved the stories. Uh, Dennis the Menace was their favorite story. They had great stories around that, and then we'd talk about which coping skill they would use, and got to the point that they could actually make up their own stories, uh, which was really pretty remarkable. So it's just a matter of practicing it. To use it. All right, so we're going to wrap up with a little guided progress, progressive relaxation exercise. I'm going to lead us through that, and that's how we're going to finish our, our four. So the first thing to do is to get comfortable. I'm going to talk about this first, and then we'll actually do the relaxation exercise together. So uh, get comfortable, and then when, I, when we're ready, um, I'll say close your eyes, and then we're going to concentrate on slowing our breathing, and then we're going to let our mind go blank, and then uh, once we've kind of got the breathing kind of going, then we're gonna move into muscle relaxation. And with the muscle relaxation, I'm gonna say tighten your muscles as tight as you can, tighter and tighter and tighter. And then when you're ready, 
Breathe out and relax your muscle and imagine all your stress leaving with them. And we're going to go from our feet all the way to our head. And we're just going to do the remainder of this session doing this relaxation exercise. And after a little bit of the muscle relaxation, we'll move this into imagery where we're going to imagine a relaxing place. And then we're going to stay with it. So we're going to say to ourselves uh, when we're ready, I feel relaxed and ready to continue my day. And then we're going to slowly open our eyes and smile. Okay? So those are the steps that we're going to do here. So let's get ourselves comfortable here. Kind of uncross everything. And then when you're ready, close your eyes and concentrate on your breathing. So you want to breathe in through your nose if it's comfortable and out through your mouth if that's comfortable. And then you're going to let your mind go break <laughs> as you breathe in and out. And just focus on my voice, helping us breathe in and out. You're going to find a pace that's comfortable for you. As you breathe in, fill your abdomen with air. And then as you exhale through your mouth, let it all go out comfortably as we breathe in and out. And as we breathe in and out, feel your body relax as you're breathing in and out. Just feel how relaxed you feel as you're breathing in and out. And then we're going to move to muscle relaxation. Just for sake of time, let's just start with our hands. Make a fist and squeeze your fist as tight as you can as you're breathing in and out. Squeeze it tighter and tighter, just as tight as you can stand it. And then when you're ready, exhale, breathe out and relax your hands and imagine all the stress leaving as you release the tension from your hands as you breathe in and out. Feel how relaxed your hands feel. Next, tighten up your lower arm. Make them tighter and tighter, as tight as you can, as you're breathing in. And then when you exhale, whoo, relax the muscles as you breathe in and out. So when we do that, typically we start with our feet, work all the way up to the head as we're breathing in and out. Next, we're going to imagine ourselves, just see yourself in a relaxing place. Visualize that relaxing place as you're breathing in and out. See yourself in that relaxing place as you're breathing in and out. Notice the surroundings. What's around you in that relaxing place? Notice the scenery, the environment. What do you hear in that relaxing place as you breathe in and out? Just be in that relaxing place as you breathe in and out and then keep breathing in and out for as long as you like but when you're ready as you're breathing in and out say to yourself i feel relaxed and ready to continue my day and then breathe in and out and slowly open your eyes and smile.
That's our relaxing, our progressive relaxation exercise. How does that feel? Where are you at right now? Make a note. You can do this exercise anytime you like. Bottom line is if you're feeling stressed and you just take a few deep, relaxing breaths, it will calm you. Sometimes if we close our eyes, not when you're driving or something, but you close your eyes and do the breathing, it'll calm things down even more. And if you imagine a relaxing place, that's always beautiful too. Some of us tense up on our muscles, so doing that muscle relaxation really is helpful as well. Okay, so that's our progressive relaxation exercise. And that's it. That's it for our holiday survival kit. Thank you for joining us. I hope that was helpful. Take care. Happy holidays.